Good afternoon. I'm going to review a book called Gwyn's Latin. I'll try to make this quick. Gwyn's Latin is a short little introductory text on the Latin language. Gwyn is a fairly elderly gentleman from the UK, and his methodology, as he, as he claims, harkens back to a pre-1960s Latin pedagogy. So, of course, that means grammar translation. And he has several essays in here. If we turn to the table of contents, he has several essays in part one and part two about Latin, uh, the importance of learning Latin, uh, and then Latin pedagogy. So he asks the question, is this how to learn Latin? And then five, how in fact to learn Latin. And so he's very much against the reading method. And he says what I say, that the reading method inculcates in the student a tendency and a bad, really bad habit of guessing. That in Latin, very little is obscure, very little is ambiguous. That the morphology of every word tends to really lock it in place as far as its function. So there's no need to guess most of the time. He says that reading methods cause one to guess. And he also says, and maybe I'll look at this uh, in a minute. He also says that it's easier to teach a beginner than it is to teach anyone that has used the reading method for any length of time. That it's, uh, it's, it's so quick to impart uh, the tendency to, to guess through, through one's work that it's very hard to undo that. Then he starts exactly where I would start when teaching Latin. I don't begin by teaching Latin. I begin by teaching general grammar. General grammar are the eight parts of speech. These generally apply to all languages. Then part three, that's the re remainder of the book, beginning on page 50. That's a series of introductions to Latin grammar, more or less in its entirety, including uh, exercises. And so basically, if you know what you're looking for, you can find it in this book. And the way that he teaches is basically by uh, naming the subject, whether it be a gerund, deponent verb, what have you, and then giving a brief discourse on it, which reads like an essay. And so all the, all the major points are given, and you come away from that essay knowing all that you need to know to proceed. So I find that he's concise, if, and if this isn't contradictory, he's precise while also being a little meandering. He claims, let's see, that if you use this book, you will know many times more Latin than will be known in almost all cases by highly intelligent scholars of today who have passed all their Latin exams and are studying classics at the top universities in Britain. And that could be true. That could be true. Because the reading method has held sway for so long, I think probably the study of classics has degenerated to the point that uh, most people are guessing through their work, or they're consulting quite a few other resources to, uh, as a type of crutch. I know I saw it a lot in college. Students would uh, guess their way through a passage and could even graduate without really having a firm grasp of all of the morphology of the language. Uh, let's see. Let's see. There's some other very notable sections in here. So go to that section, I'll pause it for a second. All right, here it is. He says, uh, talking about this course in comparison to the reading method, he says, beginning here, I find it more difficult to teach Latin to those who have used either of those two courses, those being Cambridge or Eke for any length of time than to teach beginners. Indeed, the stage is reached when learning Latin properly has become next to impossible for the former. My experience confirms only too forcefully what the products, or victims, of modern Latin teaching are afflicted with what could be called incurable modern teaching-induced grammar dyslexia, grammatical dyslexia. And that's true, that's true. So, uh, Latin has morphology, and I've spoken to proponents of the reading method that will basically tell me 
to my face that morphology is not important and that a Latin text can be understood without paying dutiful attention to morphology. And I, that's just laughable. That's not even worth a response because that's very silly. Um, it is true that an ancient Latin reader probably had so automatized his comprehension of morphology that he wasn't conscious of it. But that is not possible for a beginner uh, a beginner a beginner in the Latin language, especially coming out of English where word order rather than morphology makes the most meaning. And so he he does stick it to the reading method quite a bit in this book. Um, the value of this book, I, I don't think a beginner would actually get the most out of this book. I think somebody, somebody wanting to bone up on their Latin grammar, teachers who want a, who want a resource, a quick, easy resource to brush up, um, and also people who want arguments for the continued usage of grammar translation will find this book very useful. I'll give you an example of how I've used it. So take the take the gerund for instance. There are a lot of rules concerning the gerund. It's a fairly complicated piece of Latin grammar, perhaps one of the most complicated as compared to English. And unlike the present active participle, which can take a direct object, the gerund, the future passive, cannot take a direct object. It tends, in those instances, simply to act as, as an adjective. And so the the would be object is simply in the same. Uh, number in case as the gerund. And so the gerund as an adjective becomes a gerundive and simply modifies its would-be object. Now, I didn't learn that from Wheelix, and that's not to say that Wheelix didn't teach it. It's just that Wheelix is, much, is a much larger book and its explanations can be more obscure. Uh, this book, if you look up the gerund, you will, within the span of a page, page and a half, you'll read a brief essay about the gerund. And then you will come away knowing all the main points of how the gerund is used and what it does in a Latin sentence. And so it's concise, uh, and if you, know, if you know what it is that you're looking for, you can look it up in the gloss in the back, in the index, find it within the pages of this book. And after reading a page, page and a half, two pages, you'll know pretty much what you need to know about it in order to... Um, uh, continue making progress in your translation. So I think that this is a nice, concise digest of, of Latin grammar written in essay form, and included with that are many other essays on pedagogy and many other essays on the importance of Latin and the history of teaching Latin in the West. And so I I'm happy that Mr. Gwynn found it uh, found this important enough to write. I'm glad that this is um, this is a late addition to the overall corpus of uh, Latin pedagogy, and it's a uh, it stands in stark contrast to the the more active methods that are prevalent today. And so, Mr. Gwynn ensures that grammar translation will not completely die out. Because as long as this book remains with me, I'll have his arguments uh, to hand down to posterity. So, uh, there are other books I want to review. Probably uh, Allen and Greeno, or Allen and Greno, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, and also uh, Collins' Pocket Grammar. And at some point, maybe later in the summer, maybe early in the school year, I'll have... Uh, Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire read, and I'll review that as well. But if you're into the grammar translation method, or if you want to engage constructively with the arguments of a grammar translationist, then I would say pick up this book and uh, at least read the first two sections. Use the rest as a, as a handy resource. I think that this is a must-have for anybody teaching Latin, or anybody... Anybody in college learning Latin that has only only ever been exposed to the reading method, you would do well to brush up on Latin using Gwynn's text. So if you disagree with me, go ahead and disagree with me in the contents. Uh, like and subscribe if you want. I'll, I'll be putting out more reviews 
And the more engagement I get, the more often I'll post. So until then, take it easy. Bye.